And we are back. Pokemon Fire Red Hardcore Nuzlocke. It's going to be a little bit different this time around. We are only going to be using Poison type Pokemon. So the only starter we can pick is Bulbasaur. And that means a lot of these first encounters are going to be very limited in nature. And I think we are only going to be working with about 13 or 14 different Pokemon. Um, so that means any death that happens is going to be incredibly impactful compared to where we're just using every single Pokemon at our disposal. So we're going to have limited encounters, but all of the other hardcore Nuzlocke rules are on the table. If it dies, it dies. You can't use items in battle. You're on set mode, all of that good stuff. So this is going to be my first monologue. Let's see how it goes. So it looks like we have the Venusaur line. We've got Beedrill. We've got the Nidoqueen and Nidoking, as well as the Arbok. We've got Crobat, since trade evolutions will be enabled. We also have Vileplume, Venomoth. I believe Victory Bell is Leaf Green exclusive, so we don't have them. Looks like we have Tentacruel, which is really nice, uh, potentially the Muck or Weezing. And we've got Gengar, and I do believe that is it. But both Gengar and Crobat could be huge, so having that trade evolution on is going to be awesome. So again, if you lose any of these Pokemon, you're really, really going to feel it. And you're going to need a very good six, a final six team there for the Elite Four, since they're all going to be vulnerable to the same attack. So let's do it. Let's start with the Bulbasaur and see how this run goes. All right, we have selected our starter, Bulbasaur, and we have named him Light Yagami the main character from Death Note. We're going to go with the Death Note nicknames for this run. So we have Charmander versus Bulbasaur. I don't usually showcase the starting fight, but I think it'll be very comical, uh, which you will see later on in this run. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. Bulbasaur really pulling his weight here, bringing Charmander to the brink and just barely defeats the Fire Lizard. Really good stuff. And now let's go get some first encounters and see what we're working with. Forget the first encounters. We're just going to take on our rival 1v2. We matched his levels at level 9 for our Bulbasaur. So let's see if we can pull this out. This Bulbasaur is going to have to pop off as both Pokemon have super effective moves potentially. Pidgey comes down here. We get the Leech C going to be healing back all of that health that we need. And Light Yagami is ready to go. We're going to move to the tackle for some damage get, and get a critical hit, bringing the bird to half HP with the Leech Seed on top. Beautiful stuff. Pidgey comes down with another tackle. Critical hits could be devastating here as the Leech Seed almost finishes off Pidgey. And we fade away with one more tackle, but we're going to have to eat some more damage from the bird. And we don't get the Leech Seed heal. We do get the level up, though, and that might be everything. As our rival throws out Charmander, his starter, and now it is a 1v1. We are up in level, so a little bit more tanky, a little bit more chunky and we get the leech seed down thankfully bobos were not missing that crucial move and charmander may or may not have ember but is not using it so we are just siphoning off life with leech seed bringing the tackles down and the scratch thankfully does not crit so we are still alive and we our heart is still beating and we go for one more tackle and we live a scratch and everything is fine and now we can go grab some team members in the forest so our Viridian Force encounter is going to be the little Weedle, chuck the Pokeball, and add him to the team. So no tragedies happen on our way to Brock. We're operating with a Beedrill and a Bulbasaur at this point in the game, our two poison types filling out the roster. And if you have Bulbasaur against Brock, it really is just a cakewalk. There is, it's almost impossible to lose this fight. I'm sure there is a way you could, but really the Geodude drops with one Vine Whip and Bulbasaur backs up and just takes down the Onyx with a second Vine Whip. Just a two shot, Brock is there, then Brock is gone, and that is it. Really, this fight becomes incredibly hard if you go with the Charmander line, but if you have Squirtle or Bulbasaur, it is no problem. We didn't even have to risk Beedrill's life, so both of our Pokemon are healthy, and now we are ready for some more Poison-type encounters. Our first encounter found on Route 3 is going to be the Nidoran. I absolutely love Nidoking. His moveset is so diverse. Let's throw the Pokeball, secure it, and now we are operating on a team of three. And then for our Mount Moon first encounter, it is going to be the Zubat, chuck the Pokeball, and secure it. For our Route 4 encounter, it is going to be the Ekans. It does not have Intimidate, so it has Shed Skin for its ability, but we will still take it. It is now time for that second rival fight. We've got five team members here. 
all leveled up to 18 to match our rival's level cap. Ryuk comes down the Nidorino, starting the party off with a double kick, getting some damage down. Pidgeotto responding with the gust, a little chip off the top. Ryuk with another double kick, getting Pidgeotto into range, but has to tank another gust here, floating around half HP with a quick attack, popping off here, but we do finish off the Pidgeotto, and now Ryuk, one of our best Pokemon, is hurting. The Abra comes down, and if I'm not mistaken, Abra does not have any moves other than teleport at this point in the game, so now I'm just trying to set up for the next potential Pokemon that our rival is going to use. And we do have to watch out for that Charmander as it threatens two of our Pokemon with super effective fire. So we throw out light Yagami right here. The Ivysaur comes down, gets two Vine Whips onto the Abra and clears it. So now we are two Pokemon down, two Pokemon to go. And the Charmander comes down. Not playing any games here. We're going to try to put this little Fire Lizard to sleep. The Sleep Powder does connect, but we had to eat an Ember to get to that spot. Will it be worth it? Can we clutch at the Leech Seed? Potentially coming down here. And Charmander in its sleep sidesteps and dodges the potentially life-saving move here. But we do get it on the next turn. And now whatever we do, we're going to be getting some health back from that Leech Seed. But he wakes up. The Ember comes down. And if this crits, we lose Ivysaur. But we hold on, get a Tackle plus the Leech Seed. And now we are in danger here. We're going to have to swap around and see what happens. Who is going to come out here and tank an Ember? Misa is going to be super effective. So we go into the Ekans. It's not evolved yet, but it's going to have to tank this right off. 12 HP, not too shabby, Ember. And then the Leech Seed healing back. But all we have is a... Bite to do neutral damage, and the Ember does not crit. Thankfully, we would have lost Rem there, but Lee Seed healing us back, and now I believe we just finish off the Charmander with the Bite. Thankfully, we are faster, and that just leaves one Pokemon. It is the Rattata. We are potentially dead to a Hyper Fang, so we've got to watch out for that, but we're going to swap into Misa. the Not the Butterfree, but the Beedrill, and we just tank a neutral Quick Attack. Easy money there, and then the Fury Attack comes down three times. Tail Whip is there. Potentially crit with the quick attack could finish us off, but the Fury Attack comes down, beats Rattata to the punch, and we clear our rival. And then for our Route 24 encounter, it is going to be the little Oddish, basically just the discount Bulbasaur here with the same typing. Chuck the Pokeball and secure it. All right, we have avoided all tragedy leading up to Misty. All five team members are intact, and we are just going to take her on right here, right now. Staryu comes down, Ivysaur to answer. Looking for that super effective stab vine whip. We tank a water pulse, no problem, no confusion there. Almost one-shotting the star. Super potion comes down, heals up the star you to a safer space vine whip, returning it to the red healing range right there water pulse again no confusion beautiful stuff and star you falls it is now just starmie left in this fight for misty and the ace comes down neutral swift connects not too much damage to worry about there but it will build up over the course of the battle as starmie is faster starmie is now in the red range and we could go for the vine whip to kill but instead we pivot to elite seed thinking that misty might heal or starmie might use recover the elite seed does heal us back we're holding on with 18 hp starmie's got nothing left but is faster we're gonna have to swap into another pokemon on to tank this swift and potentially get the leech seed to fade away as gloom does just that and swift comes down we heal with the leech seed and starmie is no more that is two badges down in this poison type only nuzlocke or monologue let's keep this run going as always thank you so much for your time i really do appreciate it and i will catch you on the flip peace